Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we have a new product preview to show you. This is the Asus Republic of Gamers Poseidon Platinum. This is a GeForce GTX 780 graphics card um, that is a custom built, custom cooled unit as you'll clearly see here. It is a little bit on the expensive side, it's 599 bucks, that's $100 over the standard kind of reference retail price, but with that, you get a very unique combination of hardware and cooling. Um, the, by far the standout feature here is we're looking at uh, a standard GTX 780 configuration in terms of specifications. You still got a 2304 CUDA processors running at a 954 megahertz base clock, 1006 megahertz boost clock. That's a slight overclock, but really not that dramatic. Uh, still got the same clock speed on your memory, 6 gigahertz, 3 gigs on a 384 bit GDDR5 memory bus. But what really makes this card stand out is the cooler itself. Asus calls this the Direct CU H2O, which is obviously a derivative of the Direct CU2 cooler that has been very popular with retail Asus cards for a long time. Um, this is a combination car, uh, cooler rather that lets you run off air cooling only, or a combination of water cooling and air cooling. Now, Asus claims that this, in, in its air configuration, will run 7 degrees Celsius cooler than the reference designs, but in its water configuration will be 24 degrees Celsius lower than the reference design, and that's a huge amount. Now, I'll be up front here today, we don't have water cooling testing results for this. We're looking at it. This is more of a preview. Uh, I've done some air testing and benchmarking and overclocking, but we're getting ready to send this card off to Mori so that he can do all of the water cooling testing that you'll see in the full review. Uh, but even without that stuff, this is a pretty impressive card so far. Power design is a DigiPlus VRM with 10 phase super alloy power. They're using concrete chokes on here. They say it will eliminate all of the buzzing that you may hear on some high end graphics cards. Uh, they're using Japanese black metal capacitors. And on the back, they actually have some pause caps. They're polymer capacitors um, that, again, they say will improve overclocking headroom and overclocking stability. There is an ROG LED light on top that will pulsate and illuminate. And of course you can get the ASUS software like GPU tweak and they even have a, a streaming capability built into that software as well. Now with this cooler, it's actually two coolers in one. So you actually have a vapor chamber cooler that actually has the heat pipe, or I'm sorry, it has the water tubing going through it. And then on top of that is a triple heat pipe kind of a standard heat sink that actually makes contact with the vapor chamber itself. Uh, because of that, this cooler is actually two to three degrees Celsius less efficient than the standard ASUS DirectCU2 cooler. Uh, they kind of admitted that to us when we met with them at CES and first saw this card. Uh, but that's still much, much better than what you'll get in the reference design coolers. For water cooling users, you have quarter inch threaded fittings on here and you can use your own barbs for that so you can work it into whatever your custom system happens to use. Uh, the heat pipes, uh, there, like I mentioned, there's three heat pipes on there, go across the fans. You've got two fans on there. They are the dust proof fans that ASUS has had for some time. On the back side, you'll see an aluminum back plate and flipped power connectors, which are actually kind of nice for when you're uninstalling or installing this card into your system. Um, the, uh, there's actually a uh, kind of a die cast heat sink for your memory and MOSFETs. So even if you're, you're using water cooling, you'll still be able to take advantage of that portion of the heat sink to keep the rest of the delivery, power delivery and memory systems cool. Um, this actual, the fan part of itself can come off of the heat sink. It's just held on by a handful of clips. So in theory, if you're water cooling and you're comfortable with the airflow in your system uh, to keep your memory MOSFETs cool enough, you could remove that fan if you wanted to, although that's not something ASUS has recommended to us in any, in any capacity. If you look at performance, this card is not really highly overclocked out of the box, and that's kind of one of the things that ASUS does, even with their high-end flagship cards, which is a little bit disappointing, uh, but they definitely leave a lot of headroom in there for users to get access to on their own. Out of the box, you're looking at anywhere from 5 to 10% performance advantage for the Poseidon GTX 780 over a reference GTX 780, which is okay, but you can really crank that up with overclocking. Again, our overclocking results here are only with air-based overclocking. We'll have more results in our full review when Mori uh, gets to test the water cooling section of this, but we're able to hit a plus 160 megahertz offset 
on the clock speeds, which takes the boost clock from 1006 to 1166 megahertz. We did push the voltage all the way up to 1.212 volts, and we kept the power target maxed out at 110% to reach that. Um, now, even though the boost clock was listed at 1166, we actually saw in some looped iterations of Metro Last Light hitting clock speeds as high as 1280 megahertz. Temperatures on the GPU were hitting in the 75 to 76 C range, and um, obviously the fans were increasing to make sure that that stayed below the 80 mark that uh, NVIDIA and ASUS have set on that. So you're seeing an additional 15% performance increase or clock speed increase with our overclocking results on air. So we'll be curious to see if more is able to get more overclocking headroom when water cooling, or if we're just gonna see temperature drops from the water cooling. It'll be interesting to see how that works out. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is $599. It's available starting today, according to ASUS. So you're gonna pay $100 premium for this card. You're gonna get a really, really good air cooler. Maybe not the best air cooler that ASUS offers, but one of a, uh, a really good one. And then you have this optional water cooling capability as well. It's nice to see kind of ASUS offering these types of options they have on a couple of ROG motherboards as well recently. So make sure you go to PCPro.com and check out the full review of this. We'll have full sets of benchmarks, more overclocking results, all the water cooling, power, temperature, noise testing uh, that you could ask for there. We just wanted to make sure we had something for you guys on our video channel uh, to check out on launch. So make sure you go to PCPro.com or check the link listed in the comments or uh, description below. Thanks, guys.